Now I have the pleasure to call up the next presenter. Not only is Andrew Skip serving as this year's Tocqueville Society Chair, he served as the campaign chair for the 2004 campaign. He received the 2011 Frederick and Lucy Kellogg Award. And it just so happens that he is the grandson of this prestigious award's namesake, Frederick and Lucy Kellogg. To present the, this year's Frederick and Lucy Kellogg Award, please welcome Andrew Skip. Thank you, Mark. And thank you to all our inspiring honorees tonight. Really some wonderful stories and such a gift to our community. United Way is celebrating its 80 years, which makes the next award even more poignant. My grandmother, Lucy, and grandfather, Frederick Kellogg, for whom this award is named, were both born in Waterbury and lived their entire lives here. My grandfather was the fourth generation to run Hubbard Hall, our family's 174-year-old business here in Waterbury, followed by my uncle Chuck Kellogg, and now run by my, my cousin and his daughter, Molly Kellogg. My grandmother was the youngest of three girls, the daughter of Charles Templeton, a self-made man with only an eighth grade education, eventually worked and became owner of a hardware store here in Waterbury. After serving as an alderman in Waterbury, he became a state senator and then lieutenant governor. And in 1923, Charles Augustus Templeton was elected to serve as the 68th governor of Connecticut, exactly 100 years ago. My grandparents loved the Waterbury area and more importantly, had sense of a commitment instilled in them by their parents to make a difference in the community where they lived and worked. In 1942, when my grandfather, Fred Kellogg, was serving in the United States Navy in the Pacific, my grandmother, Lucy Kellogg, served as a charter member of the very first board of directors of what was then known as the Community Chest, which we now call the Greater Waterbury United Way. Although my grandparents passed away in the 1990s, for this award to be named in their honor and presented to such a high caliber list of community leaders year after year is truly inspiring. And tonight's honoree is no exception. This year's recipient is Lynn Henry Franklin Henry, a woman who has spent much of her adult life in service in the greater Waterbury community. As a member of the Women's Committee at the Mattituck Museum, Lynn met my grandmother, who had become a role model, mentor, and more importantly, her friend. Later, they served together as board members at the YWCA, along with a diverse group of smart, dedicated women. They worked together to provide needed services to women and girls in the Waterbury area. The YWCA board put their efforts to removing obstacles such as sexism and racism, as well as raising funds. Expanding her volunteer efforts, Lynn joined the evaluation committee of the Waterbury Foundation, the precursor of the Connecticut Community Foundation. During her time, they undertook a major shift in their funding approach including multi-year grants with the knowledge that large grants over several years could have a stronger and longer lasting impact. As Lynn stepped into the role of board chair, the foundation collaborated with the United Way to identify and act on the greatest needs in the community, including transportation, health, education, shelter, and food. With a passion to provide additional educational opportunities to children in Waterbury, she became the founding member of the Brass City Charter School. Some of her most rewarding work has been with teachers, parents, 
and children in school. Lynn's expertise led to an invitation to join the Community Impact Council for the United Way, later serving as Impact Cabinet Chair. One of the Cabinet's goals of particular importance to Lynn has been to provide more support for individuals living with the challenges that are funded through the allocation process. Lynn is a board member of the Leavenworth Foundation and served as a board member of the United Way of Greater Waterbury, Mattituck Museum, Brass City Charter School, Mitchell School PTO, Naugatuck Valley Community College Foundation, and a trustee of the Leader Lever Foundation. Lynn's impact has been extensive, and I strongly encourage you to read the full bio in tonight's digital program. The United Way of Greater Waterbury is proud to present the Frederick and Lucy Kellogg Award to my grandmother's, my grandmother's friend. <laughs> Lynn Franklin. Lynn Franklin Henry, come on up here. Thank you, Andrew, to uh, truly to receive an award in the Kellogg's name, Lucy and Fess, is truly an honor. I cared so much about them. Uh, I really, I truly believe that Chris and Jacoby orchestrated this award just to get me back in to an indoor large event. <laughs> this is my first one and first place I've gone anywhere without a mask, so. Uh, and yes, Nancy, now we can go out to dinner. <laughs> Uh, as my daughters, Brooke and Lauren, who are here with their families, my son-in-laws and two of my grandchildren, they would definitely share that I love to be with people and talk with people and learn from people. And volunteering is partly what that's all about for me. Volunteering enriches your life in so many ways, but none more evident than the people it brings into your lives. Volunteers like Rick and Kat, who saw a need in the community and dedicated their time to working with others and making a true difference in their lives. Like Rick and Kat, if you volunteer, you have to have hope. And I'm not talking about optimism. I'm not an optimist. I do not believe that everything is going to be just fine no matter what. And I'm not a pessimist. I don't believe everything is going to go down the tubes if we do nothing. But I do believe in hope, but hope is a belief with action. You can make a positive difference. Hope and action are what Fess and Lucy were all about. They were always generous with their donations and time. My husband Charlie remembers a time when he was soliciting Fess for a capital campaign donation. Fess made a very generous donation, as he did many times. And then as Charlie was walking out of the room, said, Charlie, if you don't meet your goal, I want you to come back to me first. Lucy was all about hope and action. While she was involved in so many other organizations, I really did get to know her best at the YW when I joined the board around 1980. I soon learned that in 1945, with a petition over 2,000 Waterbury women, Lucy helped to establish the Waterbury YWCA, where all women were welcome to meet in their own place and to address their own needs. If you're old enough to remember the 70s and 80s, most nonprofit fundraisers were ZD dinners, small auctions, and a lot of rummage sales. One day, Lucy asked, why are we having all these rummage sales? 
Let's have a shop. So her beloved barn shop was born. I think Jill remembers that barn shop. Helping Lucy in the barn shop gave me even more time to get to know her, learn from her, and gain a very important insider knowledge of when she might put her Ferragamo shoes on sale. But then I was sore to discover that my size seven feet would never figuratively or literally fill her shoes. The YW is filled with so many other women that I grew to respect and learn from and love. Lida Wright, Priscilla Whittemore, Vassa Knight, Lillian Baskerville, and they all were committed to our mission to eliminate sexism and racism by any means necessary. Here at the United Way, I have worked closely with so many other volunteers, many here tonight. Mary Rosengrant Chipalone, Stephanie Hayes, Aaron Dorman, Liz Brown, and most recently, Eurixa Lopez. The cabinet is in very good hands. And several others who have become dear friends, Nancy Becker, Kathy Smith, Kathy Luria, and Annie Scott. If you volunteer, you also have the privilege of working and learning invaluable lessons from staff members. People like, in my past, Barbara Ruggiero and Nancy LaDonna at the Brass City Charter School. People like Althea Marshall Brooks at Bridge to Success. And here at our own United Way, Rebecca Williams, Joanne Reynolds Belanda, and the incredible Community Impact staff, Karen Mello and Renee Young. And of course, Kristen Jacoby, and I believe that Kristen is hope personified. Whether you volunteer or work for a nonprofit, hope is what drives you. Hope that our collective efforts can change lives. Hope that we can change the future of our community for the better. One of my favorite quotes is by James Baldwin. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. I can't thank you enough for this honor, to have it, an award in the name of friends and people I admired so much, like Bess and Lucy, means everything to me. Thank you.